Right, here is where the normal distribution actually gets difficult. If the examiners are feeling like demons, they will ask you something like this for eight marks. It says a multiple choice paper has n questions where n is bigger than 20. Each question has five options of which only uno is correct. A pass is obtained if at least 20 questions are answered correctly. It is required that the probability of passing by randomly guessing answers is less than 2.5%. By using a normal approximation, find the greatest value of n. Okay, well, even though they said find a normal approximation, the first thing we should be doing is um, sticking with what this is actually to do with, and that's a binomial distribution. We have n questions, either you're correct or not. The only thing is, what's the probability of getting any question correct? Well, we are guessing, and they are saying it's random, so there's a one out of five chance, which is 0 0.2. So this is to find x. x is the number of questions guessed correct out of n. x is binomially distributed n and 0 0.2. Now they want us to fix the situation such that the probability of getting at least 20 questions correct so they want the probability of x being at least 20 being correct to be less than 2.5%, which is less than 0.025. Okay. Now from there, we can move on to the normal distribution. I mean, you could work with the binomial, but it's hella long because you have to work out the probability of 20 up to n, which you can't actually do anyway. You have to do less than 20, 1 minus uh, less than or equal to 19, and then you have to, have to add the probabilities from 0 to 19. You're just not doing that, okay? Which is why we're doing a normal approximation. So we're going to let y equal the normal approximation of x. Now, to move on to the normal approximation, we need to know what mu and sigma squared is. How do you work out the mean or the expected value? Well, if I give you an example of, say, there was 10 questions, and you can the probability of getting a question correct is 0 0.2, you would say, okay, then you must get about two questions correct then. You just do 10 times 0 0.2. It's a GCSE concept, okay? Expected value is your trials times the probability of success. So NP is 0 0.2N. Sigma squared is NP 1 minus P. So this you don't prove at A level. is something we prove in further maths. So NP is 0 0.2N times 1 minus p, 1 minus that is 0 0.8, so 0 0.16n. So y is normally distributed 0 0.2n, 0 0.16n. Be careful that sigma squared. Now, the next thing we need to do is we need to convert this into a normal distribution situation. Now, to do that, you have to make sure that this inequality is always equal to. Now, the binomial distribution is a discrete distribution where the bars do not touch each other. Okay, so this is like 20. So I want 20, 21, 22, etc. But when we move into a normal distribution, we cannot have gaps. Okay, so what we need to consider is in the continuous distribution, all the values that could have rounded to 20. Okay, and that's the upper and lower bound to the nearest whole number. That's going to be 19.5 and 20.5. But notice 20.5 is already in that range. So we're going to extend it out to 19.5, okay? So basically what we're doing is we're extending the bars by 0.5 so there's no gaps there. So it looks something like this, a bit like a histogram, okay? So this is the probability that y is greater than or equal to 19.5. This is our continuity correction, okay? And we want this probability to be less than 0.025. Now, it gets a bit weird when you write it like this with these inequalities because we tend to prefer it to be equal to. So, why teach all my GC, I mean, what GCSE students, why I teach my A level students is to write this as equal to 0 0.025 or less. Okay? Because in order to solve this problem, we need a cumulative statement, which will be uh, the reverse of this. If you think about the uh, normal distribution here, we have the mean is 0.2n. Now, the standard deviation, be careful, is the root of this, which is 0.4 root n. 
Now 19.5 is over here, and this needs to be 0 0.025 or less, right? Which means we need that cumulative statement up until this point would be 0 0.95 or more, okay? So you could say the probability of y being less than or equal to 19.5, yeah, so up until this point is 0 0.975 or more, all right? Now we just need to solve that. We need to introduce n to mu and sigma, they're unknown, we practice this loads, we need to convert to the phi distribution. Phi of, um, phi of that, minus the mean, divided by the standard deviation, is 0 0.975 or more. Okay. Now, you could just keep it as an inequality. Inequality, I could show you guys both situations at the end, but at the end of the day, we're still doing inverse phi. Okay. So, what we got. I mean, you should start to notice what we're trying to solve here, but we'll decide which one's the nicer one to represent. So, we have 0 0.975 in our inverse normal. I get 1.9599, yeah, with sigma, because when we do this, sigma is now 1 and mu is 0. So we have 19.5 minus 0.2n over 0.4 root n is 1.9599 dot 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 or more technically because if you want this to be basically here or here, yeah, this is the equivalent of this in the z distribution. You're basically saying it could be this. Yeah, which fixes at 0 0.025, or you could be on the right. If you go to the right of that, this value goes up, and then the probability gets smaller. It's basically saying you're getting further away from zero, okay? So you can still say all more here, but the only trouble comes from when we need to solve this. Now, this is a quadratic when we multiply through by the denominator. So maybe here, it might be better to um, have an inequality, okay? and solve the quadratic inequality. So what do we want? We wanted, uh, this was less than 0 0.25. This is greater than, yeah, because we said or more. So basically saying we need to be greater than this value, okay? So, multiplying through by that denominator, we get 19.5 minus 0 0.2n greater. So I'm gonna store that value, menu one, a times 0 0.4, 0 0.78, dot, 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 uh, uh, root n. Now, all of this is going to come to the other side. So we get 0 0.2n plus 0 0.78, dot, 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 root n, minus 19.5. I'm going to store this as A. I'm going to restore that as A. Now, in the exam, guys, you should show the quadratic formula. You can lo lose marks if you don't. So it be negative B plus or minus root b squared minus 4 a c all over 2 a. Find the roots uh, so I've stored that alpha a whoops menu a solve the polynomial so we have 0 0.2 and we have alpha a, and we have minus 19.5. Okay, so we have 8.10. And this, so I'm going to store this as well as a now. Just I just store everything as a, basically. And minus 12.0. Now, you're not even allowed to have that situation, okay? Because root n can't even be uh, negative, okay? So from here, we have a situation. Uh, in terms of when we square that, we're going to get a, an interesting value of n. We're going to get, what, like 64 or something. And we need to decide if by keeping this inequality, we want to be less than, right? So we want to be less than. So I'm just going to keep this into account just for now. What would it look like? Uh, let me rub this out. Let's just keep it up here. 
So we have two roots here. We have the 8.10. I mean, I'm going to square it, but I'm just going to put 8.10 for now. And the minus 12, which we know is not a solution. But we have this quadratic. Okay. But if we go back to the original, we wanted it to be less than. So less than zero means we want this part of the graph. Okay. Which means we need to be between these two. Okay, so my solution for root n needs to be between those. But we know root n can't even be negative, so it has to be between 0 and 8.10. So root n has to be between these two values. Okay, and now we need to square that. So now we're actually going to square it. Uh, did I save it? I think I did. Let me do it again. Okay, a, a squared, 65.72. So root n needs to be less than that 65.72, dot, 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 and greater than zero. Well, whoops, sorry, n has to be. We squared that, right? Well, if n has to be less than this, it said what's the largest value of n we could possibly have? n has to be 65. And that is our solution. That is quite a tough question, even harder than usual, because usually, they don't actually give you this uh, range. So making it a range makes it even more tricky. Um, usually they just make it equal to. But yeah, guys, that's a tough question. Brain is sore right now. But if you like, if you learn something today, I'd appreciate if you hit the like button. Subscribe for more maths content. If you're interested in my A-level maths courses, link is in the description for more details. And feel free to join the Learn Gang Reddit page if you want to submit your own questions and get feedback from the community. I'll see you in the next video. Nice.